What's up everybody, this is Adam with Reese Customs and if you have something you 3D printed and you want to make copies of it, the best way to do that is with a silicone mold and epoxy. This is something that I designed and 3D printed. Uh, designed it up in Fusion, 3D printed it, and it's red, it's white PLA, but it's red because I primed it with um, several coats of a sandable primer and then I painted it so it would be smooth. Whatever the surface looks like, of the piece that you're molding your final product will look like that also the silicone takes a very good copy of your piece so there's several things we're going to need for this uh, we obviously got to make a mold to put this in we're going to need silicone this is from our friends at Illuminolite <coughs> sponsors <laughs> um, we're going to need a vacuum pump a vacuum chamber mold release is not really necessary but we're going to use it a container to mix your silicone in, possibly a scale if you're gonna uh, if you're not gonna use the entire batch, which we are. And then if you have something big, here's a nice tip: if you have an old mold that you made, these are uh, recycled pieces of silicone. You can drop those in there and fill up the space, so you can use less of the new silicone. But our mold is pretty tight; we're not gonna need that. So the first step is we need to make something to hold this in. And what this is, is those plastic, uh, like political signs you'll see on the side of the road, things like that. You can buy this at like Lowe's. It's just like a plastic board. And uh, what we'll do is, I trimmed out a section that it's gonna fit in. Uh, one nice tip, if you just cut, score through the backside, cut through the backside, you can fold the edges up to make your box. We're basically gonna make a little open top box with this and you won't have any seams to worry about here. Now for the end pieces, we're gonna hot glue these on. Uh, so let's do that right now. We're actually gonna put a bead on the inside of this as well. Once that cools down, that is our, uh, I guess you'd call it a mold or a, uh, a holder. I guess you can call it a mold. But basically, we have this. We're going to actually glue this down in here because this surface here is going to be the top of our silicone mold. So we're going to glue this in here that way so we have enough space around the edges of it. And then we're going to fill that up with silicone. So, put a little hot glue on the back of here. And center it up. Press it down until it cools. So now we have our part in our little. Uh, container and next we'll mix up some silicone obviously you'll need a container you may need a scale and your silicone itself like I mentioned earlier um, in this instance we're going to use the entire kit we're going to use all this so we don't need to weigh it out if you do weigh it out with this particular kind you would do 10 parts uh, of the base with one part of the catalyst by weight but like I said, we're not going to do that. Be sure to shake up the callus real well. And we're going to empty our silicone into this container. You can just mix it up in this container. But since we're going to vacuum it, I've had problems with it just bubbling out of here. So we're going to mix all of our base. and the catalyst. We're gonna to wanna to mix this real well. Don't worry about mixing air bubbles into it, that's why we're gonna vacuum it. So, 
you want to mix it till it's all a nice uniform pink color and this is just like epoxy you have a uh, base and a hardener silicone works the same way only obviously it retains its flexibility unlike epoxy just because I want to make sure it's mixed up good enough drip off of here and we got about a 30 40 minute work time on this so we don't have to be super super rushed like with some of the quick set epoxies and all this is is a little drill extension with some zip ties tied, tied onto it that's good enough I'm gonna let this sit over the trash can continue dripping all right now I'm going to take this stick it into our vacuum chamber and we're going to pull the bubbles out of it so one tip with this is you don't want to go full force all at once because it's just going to be a disaster so what we'll do is we have our valve open turn on our pump and then gradually close the valve you should start to see some of the bubbles coming out. Realistically, if I had a larger container, which I should have done, uh, I would just pull it, let it expand as high as I can because the bubbles will pop quicker. But in this instance, we're limited on space. So I'm just going to keep reducing pressure as needed so it doesn't expand over the container, but it's still pulling the vacuum and popping the bubbles. And while we're doing that, we'll take our mold, and this is some stoner mold release. We shouldn't need it the silicone shouldn't stick to it, but just in case we're going to spray this lightly. So we reached a good happy medium. there out there's still some air bubbles in here just because for the sake of time I didn't pull them all out but I'm gonna show you how to handle that so when you're pouring your mold you can still see there's some air bubbles in here right and I'm not worried about that because when you're pouring your mold if you pour from really high up and you have a really thin stream those air bubbles will tend to pop before they hit before they land so now we're just filling up the mold Now we just let it set. Uh, we'll come back and check on this tomorrow and if everything went okay then we'll have a mold to make an epoxy replica of our 3D print. And there's some air bubbles in this but I'm not worried about them.
uh, if we were trying to make a, uh, a very high precision part or a very, very accurate um, reproduction, we would have done things a little bit different. But for this, this is a decal that's going on the side of my truck just for fun. And uh, it's going to work perfect. So I'll catch you tomorrow. All right, so our silicone mold has been setting up actually for several days because I had some other stuff to do, and um, but it is fully cured. So now we will unmold it. And this is pretty easy, basically. We just tear it out. There's our piece. Carefully. We do have some, a little bit of silicone that came around the piece, so there's like a little lip here. That's no problem, we're just gonna trim that off. Like this. And then hopefully, I'm going to carefully pull this out. I don't want to tear the silicone or anything because it is possible to tear it. So I'm just working the edges around. So my part had a lot of little detailed areas. So I'm just slowly working. I don't want to just yank it out and it could tear some of those little rib pieces. But... I'm slowly working it out so that it releases from all the little sections. And you can see, here's our original part. Here's our silicone mold. So, now we can take this piece and we can cast out of resin multiple copies of this. So it looks really good. I'm going to bring it up close to the camera so you can see. But uh, that's essentially how you make a silicone mold to duplicate parts. Any kind of parts work. Um, whatever finish, I might have mentioned this earlier, whatever the finished quality of your initial piece is, that's what your mold is gonna copy. So you want this, if you want it, leave it rough, you know, and look 3D printed, just don't do anything to it. Your mold will look exactly, it'll pick up all the fill lines that'll look exactly the same. This one I wanted shinier, smoother, because I didn't want to have to do a lot of post processing on the resin, but uh, that's pretty much it. Here is our final mold, and it is an exact copy of our 3D print. So this is going to be an emblem for my truck, just for fun, just to have something different. If you enjoyed that quick little video uh, on making a mold, a silicone mold, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to see more. Uh, the next video will be actually casting a resin part. Uh, in the mold. So we're going to do two of these, stick them to the sides of the truck, take off the F-150 that's on every truck, just put a little something different. Uh, so catch you next time. Have a good one.